Chris, thank you very much for having me. Um, yes, the World Photography, World Photography Organization is basically established to support photographers and to promote the art of photography, but also the appreciation of photography as an art. It's, a, it's an incredible medium which is growing faster and faster. And uh, I think photographers need an opportunity to be discovered and, and have an opportunity to, to raise the profile of the medium. The, the contest is open for everyone and it's uh, free to enter. And there's four different competitions. There's a, a student program for people studying photography. There's a, a program for people under 19. And then there's two other programs, one called Open and one called Professional. Um, open is very much for a single image um, and Professional is for a body of work. So it's about people who can do a series, but anyone can enter and it's free. So we would encourage everyone to go on the website and have a look and, and engage in the contest, depending on where they see their own level. Puede que parezcan parecidas de alguna manera las categorías, las competencias, sin embargo son diferentes. Primero porque la categoría estudiantil está pensada para las instituciones educativas que tienen algún programa relacionado con fotografía, de tal manera que se genere una conversación entre el profesor, el estudiante, que les puedan guiar como en ese camino hacia donde pueden llegar y eso genere como este, digamos, este ciclo de retroalimentación que estamos buscando. Creo que casi sería como prepararlos. Y bueno, la categoría juvenil de 14 y 19 años, eh, básicamente aprovechar eh, lo fácil que es para este segmento, eh, que se puedan, ¿no? que participen con una foto. Eh, entonces, esos serían como los dos mil jugadores. Um, it's, the, the whole idea of the contest is it's open for anyone. Um, and it's just about engaging with photography and, and, and you know, really showing, you know, the best of your work. So any equipment on anything. Is, is fine. Uh, we're, well, the announcement comes out in September for the jury for that year. Um, but I think it's important to note that we, we work really hard to build the jury to, to make sure we've got inclusivity from, from Europe, from Latin America, from North America, from Asia, to ensure that there are eyes on all the work that's entered from across the world. It's not just from a European perspective or an American perspective. Every year after the contest, we speak to the judges to, to look at what were trends within that year, just to make sure our categorization is correct uh, within the contest, so we can we can change categories and, and move categories. And what we found, and obviously climate change and environment is so important at the moment, um, and, and ongoing of course, but what we found was that we were getting environmental work across every category, you know, within portraiture, within landscape obviously, but it was, it was became the dominant issue within every single category, which therefore wasn't helping the other work within that category. So we decided to create the environmental category independently so that it can fit that work um, within it and it just helped then other categories, um, uh, the work within that rise to the surface. You know, ultimately any photographer, any artist, you know, bases their work on their own cultural narrative, right? It's based on their own experiences within you know, their, their life. And, you know, experience in Peru is different to experience in Chile, which is different to Argentina, which is different to Germany or Korea. So, you know, what they're able to bring is something new because it's within their own framework. So what we want to, we want to see that work and what we're, we really want to ensure we're doing is finding those amazing photographers that are working in Chile and getting them to engage in it because they do bring something new, but also the world wants to see it, you know, and actually that diversity and that inclusion, we want to see more of that work. So they've got a huge opportunity to show it. We just need to encourage them to engage. We are ultimately promoting photography as art and I think the photography art market is smaller in Latin America than it is necessarily in, in Europe or America. Um, and I think that showing that, that journey into that is a really important thing. So maybe that, that, that smaller art market in Latin America is a factor. But I would also say that really importantly, it's that, that desire to have, be critiqued from everywhere. And I think that what we need to do is try to encourage people to sort of get over that and get over that concern maybe, you know, about being critiqued from um, the, the, the world perspective. And I think we have to work really hard to show that it's, a, it's an opportunity for them as opposed to uh, a criticism. We're here in Chile basically to say there are, we know that there are incredible photographers out there in Chile and from, you know, young people through to professionals working. There is a phenomenal photography world and a photography market beyond the Andes and it is a global industry and I encourage everyone who engages with photography and enjoys photography to step forward, submit your work and engage because actually 
the opportunity that this program gives you, and it's free, it's not, there's no cost at any point, and it's the opportunity it will give you to have your work shown and get out there and potentially get publishing deals and, and get your work exhibited around the world, will open so many doors. Um, but just be brave, step forward and uh, submit your work. And uh, hopefully we'll see you winning and receiving the awards and, and having exhibitions all over the world. But it, it can change your career, but we need to be bold. Hola amigos, Power Punta Perfect.